Brandy just mentioned, we are here to talk a little about a, a new, pretty uh, amazing technology that's becoming more prevalent in our lives. I know people have probably heard of Pokemon Go and everything, but trying to translate that into the business world uh, has been an interesting conversation that's been evolving over this year. So that's why we're here today, is to share a little bit more about it and um, how it can apply to your business. So, hi, my name is Michael Baer. This is David Fothery. Um, I own a company called Fusion Corp, and we about two years ago we spun out a company called Gamify and started to play in the, the AR space a couple years ago. Um, when you know this is back before AR Kit and AR Core weren't even a thing, so we were hard coding everything and trying to, to wander around in the dark, uh, so to speak. But um, I just want to introduce David's our chief strategy officer of um, mostly on the Gamify side, but. You know, like any business, it's everything crosses and, yeah, over at the same time. So, um, I don't know how much you want to just jump into it. Sure, we'll jump so, right in. Now, this is like technology, right? So, it changes and it's open, and you know, everyone has open spaces and offices and everything. So, this should be an open dialogue because if we start talking and going down a path, and you're like, I don't know what the hell this guy's talking about, I don't understand it at all, well, then we should, like, you know, like raise your hand or ask someone, because I want really the most important thing at the end of this is that we give some sort of basis of, you know, what the heck's going on, what is it, and how is it useful and relevant. And so if, if we lose anybody or anything like that, like, please keep it an open kind of forum, dialogue type thing. Is that cool? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and, and to that point, even with this slide, I know I'm talking to a lot of tech savvy people in this room that probably keep up with the trends, but I want to at least highlight a few of them and how that uh, evolves into our conversation the rest of the deck here. So um, with technology trends, we all know this, mobile is still extremely prevalent, it is leading the way. Um, pretty much probably everybody in this room has a, a smartphone on them, uh, probably have multiple devices on them, in fact. Uh, the, but the, the real key thing that's happening right now is, you know, and we just literally had this conversation with uh, a client of ours right before this, um, our phones have changed a lot. And they're not phones anymore, they're literally computers. And before you used to have to worry about downloading an app uh, and uh, it could go over your data plan or it could, uh, you know, you're trying to connect it with something in your house. We now have Amazon Echoes and all those kind of things available to us. Uh, we are becoming more and more of a connected world and, and the cell phone has become sort of that remote control to our lives, right? Um, and we demand as customers, as consumers, and as, as businesses for this technology to enable us to make smarter decisions, be better at ourselves and our lifestyles. And because of technologies like, um, you know, within, within the networking world, 5G is coming around the corner. That makes data come a lot faster through these, these devices, helps us um, process things faster and make smarter decisions, right? We also uh, have evolved, like I said, from just working with uh, our computers to now being able to uh, play in the voice activation space with our uh, Amazon Echoes. And that changes the, the way that we uh, communicate with each other, advertise to each other, and the type of data that we can capture, right? And so because of that, you're seeing a lot more investment in the internet of things. Um, the scalability of it is, is, has grown rapidly over this past year. You're also seeing a lot of attention into the machine learning space and, and AI. Um, well, yeah, it's a whole other conversation we can have off, off line here. But um, it has then opened the opportunity for applications like augmented reality, and especially in the utility space. Um, I'm sure you've all played with the new apps that are on the smartphones. Um, you know, there's the measure app that allows you now to measure anything with your phone. Um, you're seeing uh, IKEA and companies, and we'll talk about this later on in, this, in the deck, you're seeing companies apply more of this technology in, in, uh, through the mobile activation space. You probably have heard of VR and those type of scenarios as well. Um, you know, that, that goes into the more of the headset space, and I'll let Michael talk about that next here. But the key here that I just wanted to highlight is um, there is a lot of information uh, available at our fingertips, right? And because of this integration with other technologies, IoT and machine learning, it is, it is arming us now with the ability to do things we've never been able to do uh, as marketers and as data analysts. Uh, and that's what we really want to talk about today with you. So who knows what augmented reality is? 
Pretty everybody. Much. Okay, so <laughs> I mean, you'd be surprised. There are a lot of people that are like, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. And then I have to say Pokemon Go, but not like Pokemon Go, but like Pokemon Go. And then everybody's like, okay, some people understand what that means. And then I have to say, well, what is what do you know about virtual reality? You know, and then most people are like, oh yeah, with the headset, cool. But um, the the key here is um, AR has kind of been like this novelty thing, right? So we have companies create things. I don't know if you've seen the 19 crime wine bottle thing that comes to life, and you know, there's all these little novelty things, and it's catching attention. You know, you're getting some media coverage on it, but how do you turn, how do you take a new technology and you turn it from what is a novelty to what is a utility? And so, you know, our goal or our challenge with, um, with you know, two years ago when we started building our platform was how do we actually take something that is like, well, that was cool, I can see it on my phone and that's great, and now it's over and the experience is over. It's the same challenge you have with applications now. Everyone's got an app, but an app is actually pretty irrelevant. You know, like how do I get people to, to use it? How do I get people to continuously engage with it? How do I actually turn an ROI on? Like how do I actually make it make my company money? And so that's the challenge with AR is how do we turn it from a novelty thing into an actual utility? So if you're all familiar with it, is, is anybody not familiar with AR? Do I need to like jump into it? Okay, cool. So we're all good on the same page with that, but like. That's really the most important thing about what we're talking about right now is how do we how do we take this technology and actually make it relevant um, to businesses and, and and actually turn a profit. So, so let's throw go by the numbers real quick. Um, you've got you know just looking at the numbers right now, over a billion people are expected to be using this type of product globally by 2020. Um, you've got over 1,300 different startups playing in that space. Yes, go ahead. How many use it today? Using it today? Um, so I, what's the proof? Yeah, so right now, I don't have that exact stack because I was looking for that. They give you the broad ones. But um, it, is, it is definitely becoming a bigger, bigger, bigger thing because of the new launch. Um, iOS systems had to catch up. And now that it is, um, you're seeing these numbers come out in these projections. But great question. I'll, but it, I'll was see just, if get it. it was just last year when they launched. AR kit and AR core. So even yep. the capability of what your device can do um, is was even limited last year to where you couldn't even do it. Somewhere right here. Sorry. Um, so like, you know, the devices that are even able to use it can get limited. Um, you know, so it's it's just kind of brand new. Right. And just for you know. Uh, personal experience, you know, we talked to a lot of other companies, I just talked to one the other day, that is playing in the space as well. And we're learning from each other and, and finding out more and more about our customers' needs and, and how to address some of the challenges Michael just talked about. Um, the marketplace, obviously, it's substantial. I won't read every little line here. But, you know, a lot of people get, when they first hear about it, they obviously say VR. I get that a lot. Like, are we focus in AR? But when I get introduced, they'll be like, oh, this guy works in virtual reality. Um, augmented reality, especially because it's, it's so mobile accessible, um, is projected to be four times actually more profitable than virtual reality moving forward. And a lot of that is because the headsets are still very expensive. They're still working out the bugs. And, and to build in 3D is not cheap. And so it's kind of uh, restricting itself and its ability to be adapted and, and really grow. Um, just some interesting facts that, that we found out there. 70% of media uh, planners and buyers are really wanting VR uh, and AR incorporated more into their campaigns. Um, we hear that directly uh, with some of the agencies and, and studios that we work with as well. 60% um, of shoppers really prefer uh, the opportunity to work with augmented reality and to help them make better, uh, smarter shopping decisions and said that they, you know, 71 would return more often and spend more money if, uh, if this was an available technology for them, and, and that's specific to retail. Now, we work in a lot of different sectors. Um, obviously, gaming is a big one right now, just because that's the natural progression from this technology, but you know, we're seeing a lot of growth in education and training. We're talking to a lot of people in healthcare. Retail's one that we're exploring. It's still new, very new. Uh, real estate's a really big one in marketing. So people like you and data uh, analytic companies as well are very interested because of the type of data you can capture, um, which is actually the next point I want to make here. When you look at the, 
this technology, because it's such an immersive technology that you can actually get hands on with and, and actually interact with. I think that's another thing, misconception. I let people see, oh, there's a little dancing bear there and the thing, I'm just watching it, I'm observing its passive. You can actually make it interactive by adding buttons. And we'll talk, we'll show you examples of that coming up here. So you can actually integrate with your infrastructure, some of your other marketing tools, your websites. And the key, as Michael was saying earlier, about um, the challenges of apps and where they're evolving is that you, if you can integrate a, some sort of valued service into it, um, that will make people keep coming back. If you can integrate your loyalty programs in a fun and interactive and entertain, entertaining way, um, you'll find uh, a lot more uh, reception to it and a lot more uh, opportunities available for your new revenue streams. Um, so when it comes to that interaction, what we're seeing is um, the ability to obviously track the user's uh, devices, where they are, how they're moving. Our platform has heat mapping um, capabilities to it, so you can actually know where these people are and what they're doing. And to that, I'll put a little caveat on that, uh, really important is to make sure things are permission-based. Obviously, we're now in a world where privacy and security is a really, really big deal and a very touchy subject. So we try to make everything, um, you know, some, if someone opts in or uh, allow them to uh, uh, sign up or something like that so you get the permission and then let them know that you are looking to capture this sort of autonomous inf information about them, right? Um, facial tracking and image recognition plays a big part into it. Obviously, we're leveraging the camera off your phone to connect the digital asset to the physical world. So that allows us to uh, show that people were actually were there in that space. Um, we work with other companies that have kiosks and things that we can integrate our, our platform into. So facial recognition plays a big key. So you're getting a lot of the, um, you know, gender, uh, you know, knowing how long they stood there in front of the device. Um, I'm sure you know all these, these things. So. Um, there's, there's just tons and tons of, of data that you can collect, especially from the environment as well. Um, and the more you integrate uh, with these technologies, you can actually see the weather, how it was detected at that time when the person was there, if there was an outdoor activity, if they're doing a scavenger hunt outside, sort of like a Pokemon Go, you can actually know uh, what was going on at that time in that occurrence and why they might have had a great experience or why they might not have. Um, again, um, when you have these buttons and these things that you can interact with, you can actually see, just like you do with a website, what people were clicking on, how long they were there, what they downloaded, um, et cetera. Um, We've got you know, go ahead. tons of fun little words. That, like everyone's heard of like IoT and machine learning and yeah. AI and all this kind of stuff. But like, what does it actually do for me is the real point from a business standpoint. So. Yep. Think of a museum, for instance, walking into a museum. Well, um, I have a, an actual target that, that I want someone to, a targeted path that I want someone to take within my museum to engage with all the exhibits or sponsors or you know this or that, whatever. So the point of this is to actually learn from device tracking and automatically be able to direct people based on a strategy or theory to where I want them to. So you sit down and tell me as a museum, as a curator, that you want me to hit these exhibits and then we have a new one over here and then, and then I want you to go downstairs. But I'm actually tracking your device as you're using this, you know, AR, this cool, oh look, that turned to life, that's awesome. But if I start to veer off of path because I'm installed on your device, I can automatically incentivize you or push, you know, send a push to you to hit you up to actually send you to the next waypoint that I want you to go to. So whether you're on, a car dealership lot or whether you're in a museum, you know, the same principle will apply that I now, because you're using this experience, have the ability to put in a strategy of what I want you as a consumer to accomplish. So then while you're actually engaging with my product or in my museum or whatever, I now control your experience. And it gets a little creepy when you start doing all the device tracking and everything like that, but, um, but the, the point of it is, is you know, in order for this to be a profitable thing where I can return an ROI, it's I need to make sure that um, consumers are, are creating, how do I create a transaction, right? And so by doing that, um, I have to have all this data and I have to have all this information to then learn to then be able to create that transaction. And that's what we're doing. Yeah. In the, in the museum you there, so how do you get connected? Do, you, do they have to be on it 
log on to an app, or can you just through the Wi-Fi log in, maybe do Yes, so there's multiple out? ways to do it, but you're right, you have to be inside of an application. So you have to, in order to experience AR. Now, it will, as technology catches up, you know, we'll get browser-based and stuff like that, but as of now, for, up to, for us to be able to learn and to track all that information on our platform, we, we have to put you into the application. And that is, again, the same conversation of, like, when our, our talks with, with Major League Baseball, it's like, well, I've got an app. Like, well, I know you have an app, but it doesn't do anything, right? Like, Google knows more than your app does, and if I need to figure out when your next game is or to buy tickets, I'm just gonna Google it, right? So, so it's how do I take something and actually make it relevant and create not just a novelty experience, but do all these other things in the back end that, that provides value. Yeah, but yes, so when someone logs on a Wi-Fi, I can redirect you directly to the download screen to download the app. Um, most installations that we've put in at this point in time are all like, they get some pretty decent media coverage and attention, and so you know, 90, 95% of your user base has no clue. Like, you know, they walk into a museum and we've got an AR exhibit right there, and we have two giant things up on the wall with explanations and pictures of how to do it, and then you know, I'm standing there for a whole day and 95% of the people are just looking at it like, oh, cool. But they don't even have their phone out. They're not even doing anything with it, right? So there is a learning curve to, to that. Yeah, um, and to that point, just one last point here. With the ability to integrate with uh, your point of sale system or uh, the Wi-Fi system, uh, that's just extra data. That's kind of, it, it really tells a really cool story is they came in, they experienced it, and then they got a reward and they were able to redeem it right there in the moment at the uh, concession stand or at whatever it is. That tells a complete story. That's sort of that journey that we've been all looking for. So it's a, it's a pretty amazing opportunity to tell a story and create really uh, amazing immersive experiences for your customers that they want, they value, and they want to keep using that app over and over again. So the more you can tie it into a service, the better. Um, and again, powered by jump, machine learning. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. To Go ahead. Jump back. So like, you know, Facebook introduced it through its camera AR, right? So there's all these AR things that you can do, but you actually have to still be in Facebook because they still control the environment. Just last week, Google released, you know, this whole AR mapping type stuff. But like in the article, um, the, the guy went from Google that's walking around with the guy in the article and they're looking at, you know, this real world mapping thing. He's like making jokes because it's all broken and it doesn't work. And he's like, well, don't look at that. That's not going to work. So like, you know, like we're still in the beginning, beginning part of that up. Yep, and the cool conversation is if you do it right and you have these amazing experiences, your clients are gonna come back and say, okay, what else can we do? And can you automate that? And that's where that next discussion of machine learning and, and AI comes into play because that, that type of technology really helps us advance our capabilities and makes not just the experience wonderful but convenient for the consumer, right? And um, that's been a really exciting dialogue that we've been having as well. Um, let's see here. So again, what? It's one thing to capture all the information. It's another, to, what do you do with it and make it valuable to your, to your clients, right? And sell it to them. Um, just wanted to highlight a few things. Obviously, when people think of data visualization with AR, they just immediately go, oh, cool, now I can make my graph. Um, well, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little buzzer. Um, I can make the graph stand off the table now. Well, that's cool for you know, some visualization, but there are companies out there that are, that are looking at this in a whole new way. Um, obviously, one of the coolest things you can do like up here at the top is overlay real-time data to impact like manufacturing, being able to see what's happening uh, with those machines and how, you know, if there's something out, why, and be able to translate that, not just in a giant spreadsheet, but to actually apply it into the space and help them instantly understand uh, what they need to do and how to improve it. Another cool thing that people are playing with, this, this image right here, um, as you know, with wearables, you can see your heart rate and they show the numbers. Well, they're finding that people are, um, you know, when they see their heart rates way up, it actually makes it worse. They, they get stressed out and they freak out. So is there an, another cool way to take this sort of AR uh, opportunity to, to show them that, okay, you're stressed and let's show it in gray. But if you just relax right now and it shows that they relax by turning it into color, right? And so they feel better and they feel relaxed and they see the benefits instantly in a visual way. Um, just things to think about. Don't just think about um, ARs, this uh, the Pokemon Go experience. It could really uh, impact people's lives or, or the way that you sell and make companies more efficient. It's all about productivity and efficiency for them.
Okay, so on this topic oh, example sorry. here, we've got a customer that um, they they do um, dives, right? So it's like a big giant vats and everything. Well, they've got dudes walking around with iPads and their error rate because they're just looking at this giant machine and it's you know has an oscillator in there and they're mixing dyes and everything together, but they have an error rate um, because. The, this dude with the iPad is not necessarily 100% sure what tank he's looking at. So there's a human element to air. So with AR, he actually points the iPad at the tank and it says specifically, this tank is oscillating at this RPM and it should be different. So I'm removing like a human error element um, by using image recognition yeah. through AR of that specific tank to where I can then change the parameters of what's going on inside the tank at, you know, in real time. Removing the element of like me having to track stuff through a spreadsheet and then go back to my computer and you know input it to make sure it's correct and the RPM is right. So yep. more of a real time engagement. Yep, yep. How do you remove that guesswork? Right? That we get that question all the time. Can you make this so that I can just take the human error out of my sales reps when they're selling our our product, or if I'm arming my team uh, operations team to look at the equipment, uh, I want them to be able to make smarter decisions very quickly without. Um, having to worry about it. Ben, I think it's you. Yeah, so, I mean, this kind of is the whole theme of the, the, what we're trying to get across here is how do I take something and not make it novelty and make it, you know, usable. And so you see different things like product activation, brand level activation to where, you know, uh, this is actually, a, this, this doctor's actual product so he's there giving you a tutorial on what the product is, but then it's also having calls to action to then be able to go on and purchase the product to not make it just like, oh cool, there's zombies on a wine bottle, but how do I actually turn that into to revenue? So you, you guys aren't asking a lot of questions. Is, 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 <laughs> are we cool? Is everything cool? I see this on some people, but yeah, all right. And we can show you these live examples if you want. Just come up. We have these live on, on, our, uh, on our phones. We can show it to you. Uh, but this doctor in, in this scenario, uh, he loved it so much. He's actually looking at it. Um, he, he has a distribution model where he takes, uh, he just gives the rights to his product to different uh, other practitioners, plastic surgeons around the world. Um, but he's flying around and training all these people, and it's costing him a lot of time and money. So he thought it'd be a really cool way, and we're working with him now, to take these little buttons and treat it as like chapters. Um, so when you point at, he sends, they download the app, they point at the product, it creates these chapters, it's him giving them everything they need to know, which they can then use as a tool to sell to their clients as well. They don't have to memorize, they don't have to uh, worry about uh, saying the wrong thing anymore. They can just literally point and say, well, hear it from the doctor himself, the guy who created the product. And it becomes a really cool sales tool for them as well. It's, um, it's funny, like I'm kind of all over the place talking about this and, and it's nice because I get to talk about Cincinnati a lot because of all the work that we're doing with OTR and OTR mm -hmm. Foundation. But for instance, like, you know, if you're on a, a scavenger hunter OTR or if you're on a mural turn into life type of scavenger hunt type thing and I'm walking by Rosedale is where we did it. Mm -hmm. There's actually like a 3D element that uh, is an image recognition of the brand of Rosedale that actually will incentivize me to go into that location. So as I'm doing something over here, um, you know, we call them Easter eggs, but just because we've created an experience walking around doing a scavenger hunt through a city, collecting things and being rewarded or whatever, we actually put Easter eggs in it to where you can sell sponsorship and advertising to, to drive revenue into different locations. Yeah, it's pretty cool because uh, one of the things we found is people who either have existing apps or are looking to, to build this app, they have thousands of clients already, all that information that other companies would love to get a hold of. You, you provide that monetization model for them saying if you're a member, you get access to the data, plus we get to put you into the experience uh, as we go through it. So. We'll probably start with the cycle running out of time. That's all right. So I think that's it. That's, that's, well, we're going to show you one case, a couple cases real quick. You obviously know the, probably have seen the, the IKEA one where you can place your furniture. Uh, Pez did a really cool one where you scan on the back of the, the Pez box. Uh, it activates a code which unlocks this AR experience for you and you can, um, uh, there are more games so you can 
put PEZ all over the place and all kinds of things like that, and then it then gives you a, a by playing the games, gives you a discount on PEZ. Um, Coca-Cola offered a free service to their vendors, uh, being able to put look at end caps and where to put it in your store. Uh, became a really helpful tool and, and adoption of those type of models there. Uh, CoverGirl, that's all about the try before you buy aspect. They really played on the selfie side of things, right? Put yourself, look in the camera, um, and then be able to apply different makeups and see it before you buy it. So those are just a few examples. There's lots out there. I'm sure you've, you've heard of them, but we just want to highlight a few things that we've seen and what we're working with as well with our platform. So, any questions? So, ironically, that, that's what I was saying earlier about staying in the lobby. So, just as an experiment, I stood, uh, I stood in the lobby and no one knew what the heck they were looking at. But it's an AR experience. Uh, they have these two pillars in the, in the lobby of the Ali Center. And it actually, um, by standing and looking at the two pillars, there's actually, you know, the, the Muhammad Ali brand is the butterfly. So, when you catch the image recognition of both of the butterflies, you know, you're standing at the right spot. And then it's an exhibit of the kind of walks you through the history of Ali, uh, but also the exhibits within the museum. So it's kind of like an intro to the whole museum uh, in AR. And it just plays in between these two pillars, and there's some 3D elements and stuff. And, and does, it, does, it have the, does it have images that are superimposed on any alternate reality mode? You know, like have a, you know, a Muhammad Ali standing there? And yeah, so, so, so that's a, a, you know, the question is, is, is the cool part comes in is, how, is we can still be so creative on what the experience is. So, you know, the Ali Center is, um, you know, some 3D, like, global type elements that are kind of just floating around in front of you. And then it goes into some video-based stuff, and there's a waterfall, and there's butterflies that fly all over the place. And that's just kind of fun and cool. But you know, for instance, uh, we have an installation up in Buffalo that is a, um, he's a, it's like a virtual tour guide. So as I'm walking around this park system, the Olmstead Park system, as I'm walking around the Olmstead Park system based on my latitude longitude up by a device, um, we had a dude, we dressed up and period dated him to be Frederick Paul Olmstead, an actor, and he reads this script as you're walking around. So as, it, as I'm walking around through the AR, I'm like, oh, there's a, tennis court and there's this is cool and where the bathrooms and stuff like that but as I get to significant places our actor pops up right in front of you and actually starts you know telling you about what's going on in the area and the history of the area. And these are all phone based apps that mm -hmm. you use mm -hmm. like the, the, uh, the VR headset? Yeah so so we on purpose stayed really far away from that because A the technology is not where it should be um, or where you know, it will it will hopefully be, and then it's going to change four hundred thousand times over the next couple of years. Uh, but B, it's just so freaking expensive, you know, to update your gear all the time uh, to keep up with that. So we really went, you know, well, to what David's point was: is you have a computer in your hand already. This is ubiquitous. Right? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And you look at where Apple and Google, where their investment dollars are going. It's all pretty much AR and, and AI. So follow them and you, sh you should be all right. <laughs> yes. So this is like the city tour thing, right? So I'm walking around the, the city in, Le in Lexington <clears throat> and it leads me over to my next waypoint, my next stop on the city tour. Um, as I get to that location, it drops in, which this is the brand of Lexington, this 3D, like 3D horse, horse in my environment. I click on the horse or as I get to the Lincoln mural, Lincoln comes to life and starts talking to you and all this kind of stuff. But you know, that's all cool and fun um, you know, to, to learn the history and to experience you know, all these different points in Lexington. But the point is to get you around and so like there's different restaurants downtown as you're walking that you really, that, that app will engage with. And then you know, once you get to the end and complete the scavenger hunt, you're rewarded to go in like a, I think it's like a 20% discount. Yeah, you get discounts around. And they're starting yeah, to adapt so more and more businesses to want to, to, to put rewards into the program. Yeah. So, okay. But, uh, do you have any uh, <coughs> clients in Cincinnati here? So do we don't have any applications running right now. We're in discussions with a lot of different things. Some of them we can't talk about. We're under NDA. But a uh, few of them that you probably know of, the uh, Brewing Heritage Trail and uh, OTR Foundation. I'm a, I'm a chairman of, of one of those. Uh, 
of, of that organization, um, we are looking to do some really cool AR experiences throughout OTR. So that it helps educate people about uh, the buildings and, and the architecture as well as the, the, the brewing heritage experience. Yeah, you right? guys know the underground tunnels mm -hmm. uh, back there? Done that tour. So what we're, we're actually working on creating the assets at this point in time, but as you're actually on the Brewing Heritage Trail, now you have these little markers and stuff that you're taking and learning about, but you can actually point your phone down and look like you're like you're actually looking into the tunnel. It's like a little X-ray cool vision view into it. So it's turning murals to life, and then actually a compliment to the Brewing Heritage Trail. Yeah. They put these murals up ages ago that were made for AR. Yeah. That just the technology wasn't there yet. So. If you look at some of the murals, you can see them broken down into like six different pieces. The one pieces. on the Christian Moore line house. If I'm yeah, so Christian each Moore one line. of those is a different experience and kind of walks through the history. So it becomes its own like exhibit, the, the mural on the wall. Mm -hmm. Beyond yeah. the uh, plastic surgeon there, what are some other healthcare applications for it? There's t a, a, the big conversation that we've been having is about the training and arming the sales force. I used to work for Johnson Johnson back in the day and one of the big things we had a problem with was standardization, creating materials, getting it out there and by the time they started learning it, things changed and you had to be very careful what the sales reps were putting in front of these surgeons or other clients, right? So to be able to, they slowly adopted towards the app, right? And But then the apps were really clunky and they tried then to make them into podcasts and people weren't really listening to them. They weren't. It's, it's really, it's a knowledge transfer, right? It's one thing to learn it on paper or, or listen to it and then go out and sell it. This reduces that, it, it bridges that gap. It allows you just to take it, point it at the actual product and come to life, show a video, show the hologram guy next to it, add the buttons, make it chapters, buy now, whatever you wanna do, it just adds so many extra elements to it. Uh, and we're, we're hearing a lot of dialogue and, and we're being asked to build those sort of proof of concepts out. So we're still in the early phases. But that's primarily, I would say, the biggest application we're hearing uh, is more training and education. Yeah, we started about two years ago actually building the platform to where it's, it works almost exactly like a CMS, any type of CMS does, like a freaking WordPress site. Like you can log into the back end and I can change in real time the experience of I want my guy to be here to show up, or guy to be here, or upload video, or here's new training material, or here's a button. Like you can do all of that in real time through AR, through through the application now. So yeah. it's been a work in progress. Yeah. I think the other one with doctors, sorry to interrupt you, um, uh, waypointing, finding their office, finding where that product, especially with that doctor, he wants uh, people to have the, 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 the overall app about his product, be able to find somebody in their, lo their local area nearby that sells his product. So it gives you that waypointing aspect as well. Without any names, there's a doctor in Cincinnati yep. that had ads in the oh, airport. Plus. So if them. you if you hover the application over the airport, he stand you know he appears and starts telling and everything like that. But then it actually will map you to his office to where like you know, yeah I can show you that example. Yeah, he's at CVG. He's all over uh, Kenwood. You can't miss him. He's, he's in everything. So we're going to be doing a, a rollout with him here shortly. You guys are based in Lexington. Yeah, our parent company. Did you, did you have any uh, installations in Lexington? Yeah, they are installations. Mm -hmm. So the Visit Lex. This is the Visit Lex app right here. And then we. The one on the right. This whole thing. The whole thing. The whole experience. These are just a couple different experiences. Sorry, I can get an uh, interference if I go too far. But, uh, but yeah, that's the whole experience. Is there, is there any place like on your website I can go to see where I can go and look at the AR installation? Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. a video on there, a demo on, video. On, your, on the Gamify or the On the Gamify. Gamify.co slash demos. You'll, you'll be able to find it. And um, the, the minor league baseball team in Lexington has uh, run around the park and collect baseball cards. So like their virtual baseball cards are around the park. You run around and collect them and you get a reward after you do to like 20% off on the gift shop or something random. <laughs> but um, Fusion Corp business is mainly website development? Yeah, so that's, we're about 15 years old, um, but it's more agency based so it's you know we have a small business division which does websites we have an enterprise level division which does you know big data and company automation and android and ios and then so when ar started to come you know get these mumbling about uh several you know it was two or three years ago about how to integrate with ar kit and ar core with apple and ios we spun out gamify as another entity 
and that's where we built this the AR platform. This just highlights some of the things that we can do with Gamify, if anybody has any questions. I'm here, I'm based in Cincinnati, and I'm the local rep here, so if you guys have any questions, I'm always willing to meet up with you guys as well and show you at, and how it actually works. A couple questions. Number one, so this is all phone app-based. How do I, when I walk to one of these areas, know that there's something like this? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, that's an education piece to it. So whether it's venue based or location based or anything like that, there's an education element to engaging that venue to promote that experience. The, you know, what is down the road is, and what we're not there yet is the, the browser based, the Google type, you know, when, it, when, the whole, when your whole world is already mapped out. Several companies that are kind of, I don't, Competing with that, Google yeah. and will eventually be bought by Google that yeah. are doing like actual, you know, you, you can map like there's an app location that we've been talking about a company out in California where I can just do like this, scan this room and then integrate with the browser based AR. So me just pointing my camera up at the um, anything in this room, I can append some sort of cool, you know, right. asset or something like that too. So be a little bit uh, more specific, you know, when we work with automotive groups or we work with healthcare or any of these uh, tourism groups, they have a sort of a marketing budget and they put a, like sort of a campaign out, download this app, enter a sweepstakes, download this and we're, you're entered into this amazing AR experience. So it gets them out there and, or if they already have an app and it's existing, they can ping them with a, a notification saying, hey, try this new feature. But yes, there is a, some piece of uh, upfront education and uh, awareness that needs to be to put out there just to get them to download the app. And then the second piece of that is you talked about the permissioning, which mm -hmm. has gotten obviously more complex. How does how do you get that to happen quickly so that they don't feel like it's cumbersome and just say screw it? That's a really good question. So it's all done. You know, obviously, you the goal is to do it all up front and right in the beginning. So when someone's opening the application, you already have the consumer buy-in to where it's like, yeah, okay, okay, okay. However, we have run into the scenario, um, and we've just been having the dialogue. We haven't actually done this in an, in an installation yet of incentivizing that permission later on down the road in the experience. So, you know, if you, we need to access this at this point in time. So, and you know, if you, if you do engage or do allow permissions, then I can incentivize you through the application. Yeah. Yeah. But that's only just been in conversation. Yeah, with the doctor right. one, they went tight right to their loyalty program. A lot of people are already integrated into that. They're just taking that from a, a card that people shows and integrating that in, into the app. So it forces them to use the app, which is good, and they see the value in it and want to keep it on their phone. But two, it'll have a pop-up that says this is what you're agreeing to now that it's on the app. And it's one of those quick opt-ins, just like what you get when you jump into Starbucks, when you turn on the Wi-Fi, or if you, uh, the first time you download an app, you usually have to have that uh, initial acceptance, right? Um, so we're, we're still learning in that space, but we want to make sure it's seamless and easy for the consumer to uh, enter in. We don't want them filling out a ton of information and preventing them from using the experience. Because once they use it, they're going to love it. Uh, yeah, that's make a question. No mistake, like, there's more, there's, so, there's more out there that we don't know than what we know. So, like, you know, half the time we're just learning on the fly anyway. Yeah. Right? Every day is a new mm -hmm. challenge, a new question from the client, and it's cool, it's fun. Because um, it is so transformative. This technology can be so transformative to the business model itself. They're like, this changes everything. Can you help us build the model? I'm like, ah, I'm not part of your company, but I'll help as much as I can, right? They're redefining who they are and how they can uh, create these new revenue streams, which is pretty powerful. Yeah. Like with the scavenger hunt stuff, you're actually you know, mapping latitude, longitude, those kind of things. Um, and the nature of like looking at a product and having augment reality things pop out. How does that whole mapping work like? So, you know, the example of the doctor, like, you know, because people can have their phone in all different areas, but can you explain a little bit of kind of how like you train um, mapping products and kind of what pops out? Yeah, there's a, like a tiered type of approach to um, recognizing when an experience is supposed to happen. So at least the way that we've built our platform is that the very first thing that the application does is look to see if it recognizes what it's looking at. So I can, in constant time, real time, it's actually you know scanning everything to see if in the back end there's been something that's been loaded in that I know that I'm supposed to create an experience at. 
Secondarily, if it doesn't find anything like that, it falls back into the latitude longitude. So um, is there an act, and is the device within a certain radius of this latitude longitude? I think we can go out eight decimal points or something like that mm -hmm. um, to, to create, to start an experience. And then the third level is the eye beacon. So, right, so what if I'm in here and it doesn't know what level of a building I'm on, right? So it doesn't recognize anything. It, I have really crappy service and I can't pick anything up. So then I can install just an eye beacon <laughs> to recognize that pain to then create an experience there. Yes. Eye beacons are really the best way to map out, you know, like the museum example, like how, how I want to direct traffic. Yeah, I was just trying to think of an example as like, this would be kind of awful, but like trying to use it as a POS, like, you know, instead of scanning barcodes, say there's like 10 items in front of them and it recognized those 10 products, like, okay, your total's $100 or something like that. Mm -hmm. But you would have to upload an image of each of those or train um, the imagery. Yeah, most of the conversations that we're having right now are integrating with a user's POS or API, sure. right? So, so what I want to do is make it automated to where you have your own system that you upload things to. Sure. I, all I need to do is, is have a tunnel to that. Mm -hmm. So if I have a tunnel to that, I can create that experience automatically on the back end. And you know, we're working with groups that are interested in tying into their inventory management systems, which is really cool too. So there's already a lot of images. We will have to train them about the angles and type of things that you want to put in there so that it makes sense. But uh, we've been doing that a lot right now. Yeah. So that's a great question. We, we learned a, a lot <laughs> with um, one of those things that happens and you're like, oh wow, we are idiots. Like when like it was, um, we were doing image recognition for a brand and it was on the side of a building, and we this was in, this was a, about a year and a half ago or something like that, and we kept doing it at different times in the day, so like we had this giant shadow over something, and then let, you know later on in the day it was gone, and we're like, well, what the heck? Like, it was working for me just fine like a couple hours ago. Now I come out here and it's not working. So it's like there is a learning curve to trying to figure out the how to optimize it. Um, worst thing in the world is I'm on I'm this visit you know walking around in a city guided tour type thing and the third one doesn't work mm -hmm. <laughs> like ah well that's well, that was fun all right it goes back to the cameras as well cameras and, and image recognition software all that it keeps getting better and better so it's reducing that issue which is good but we're still learning eight decimal points what does that translate down to <laughs> Or I'm not going to know the answer to that, but uh, it's it meters, so it's, um, I don't remember. Yeah, I'm it's terrible at that. I can't get rid that. Meters. But it's like a block or two, you know, you want to make 200, 300 feet, so you're probably smart. Yeah, I would need my CTO here to answer that question. I think I remember a GPS expected 15 meters resolution. 15? All right. So we've, we've got it to the point to where if you just go into Google Maps, you can click on a location, anything that you want, and you know how it gives you the latitude, longitude down at the bottom. So you just copy and paste that into the system, and it'll automatically put it where that location is that you want it. So that so it gives me the opportunity to change the Buffalo, New York experience, you know, for my office uh, here. When you talk about Did you have a call with yeah. And then it's a, an audio tour that they give. Mm -hmm. I've gone there for like 20 years. And I mean, they actually had their interpreters at one time. And they kind of changed the tour, depending on what season it is and what's set up. But I know that they keep expanding the
Right. So that so 100% correct. So if I, so you had a you had a I talked to them actually. Uh, they're going through a big org change right now. They're they just got a new person in, so I got to wait for them to talk, but that is a perfect opportunity, yes. But so like I'll I'll use this as example like the Houston Space Center, right? They they still have the fuzzy headphones and you walk around and you listen to it. And they charge people to to do that. So um, so our conversation now becomes, well, um, let's put in-app purchases and let's do two different tiers of a tour. So you get AR experiences throughout, but you can pay, you know, $9.99 and have the whole entire, you know, place, you know, have different, um, unlocks the AR experiences. But, you know, you're right. So like people were walking around the Biltmore and like, you know, great, I saw a couple things and now I'm done, or I'm, this is getting to be overload. The point is, is that with the strategy from the people to say like, well, that's great, but I really don't want them to miss this. You can actually input that strategy into all the different waypoints to then ping up the device. So the um, another uh, feature of the Buffalo installation is what do we call it, like an IMAX view or something like that. Yeah, so I when you so there was an old quarry garden that they had, um, you know, that was all filled in back. But but when you get to that point in that spot as you're walking around the park system, it actually um, this image of what the old quarry actually looked like, like kind of takes over your device. So you feel like you're actually standing in what would be the old quarry. So as you're looking around, everything like that, it, you're right. So it looks exactly like whatever I want it, whatever I want that experience to be. Mm -hmm. Yep. But the funniest thing, and this Buffalo was one of our first ones, but the funniest thing is like we put some advertisements, we had a big bank up there that wanted to advertise and stuff like that. But we started putting, um, like billboards as you're walking around, like virtual billboards. But you see people walking around with their device, and as oh, they yeah. see this billboard that pops up while you're walking on this tour thing, you'll they actually see people it. like do, like walk around the thing, like they're gonna trip over it or something like that. So we actually have to rethink where we're putting things, because if you're going through this experience, like, well, I don't, what if you walk around something and you fall off and break your ankle or something? Like, we have to be cognizant of people's, the psychology behind, yeah. I actually think that that's there. So I'm gonna change my physical realm to adapt to what is a virtual, what I'm looking at virtually. Yeah. It was just a fun- Three defining one. selfies too, because you had the hologram guy, people were putting their arms around him and taking a picture with him, right? He did that as well, but uh, it's, it adds a whole nother level of experience.